All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with some Mega Man X2. This time being played by Geo, who did commentary for the last run. So whenever you folks are ready, give your introductions and take it away with that 3, 2, 1 countdown. And best of luck on the run. Alrighty, so we're just going to hop right into here in just a second. So let's start. 3, 2, 1, and go. If my stream lags, cool. then y'all might need to use my stream, because I know my Discord won't be pretty crappy. So this is Mega Man X2. Let's go. Yeah, so so far. So, how you doing, Geo? How you doing, Tima? I am doing excellent. Hmm. This is Mega Man X2 Any Percent, played by Geo, who is a really really good runner. His uh, his current PB is 33. Oops. I think he said 33, 34, or 33, 33, something like that. 33, 33, oh. I believe is what he said. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Sounds about right. So my computer is being bad, so I'm gonna y'all gonna be able to watch my stream instead. Is that fine? Uh, we'll be a little bit behind. Yeah, but... it's all good. I, I my computer's being bad. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that should be fine. So one uh, thing about the intro it is actually the only intro, as far as I know, in the uh, Mega Man X series with no RNG at all. It's actually pure execution, which differs from any any of the other intro stages in play. Making it everybody's favorite intro stage. Yeah, X2 intro is actually really fun to do. Um, you know, because it's it's the shortest intro by far in, uh, out of the out of the uh, Super Nintendo trilogy. Yeah, in X1 you don't have the dash boost, and then in X3 you have a, a lot of uh, cutscenes and explosions and things of that nature. But in X2 you can just go straight up. You have dash boost, no RNG, no waiting. Just press your dash button and blade. Do you, do you, uh, I think you just muted it. No, do you, I think you have to mute my. I do. Okay. Let me go ahead and do that. Alright, hang on. Let me get to a cutscene first. So that everyone does this during marathons! <laughs> it happened. Oh, TV, Dude. what is there to say about our lovely favorite Maverick? What in the world? Spawn. Probably the best Maverick <laughs> in uh, the trilogy. Yeah, so. The reason we start off the run with a wire sponge is because. The, the weapon the wire sponge gives is the other yeah, chain and the chain will actually aid us with movement because whenever you shoot the chain at a wall the chain will pull you towards that wall and is and the uh, chain speed is actually uh the regular chain well i forget the numbers but the other yeah, chain speed is faster than your dash uh, the, the regular chain is like X speed, and then the charge ch charge chain is like Y speed. It's like the regular speed times something. I don't remember. Um, and basically, you want the access to the chain as fast as possible, and then you want the access to the burner as fast as possible. So we start off with uh, sponge, and then we go to Gator. Uh, Gator gives us access to the uh, Buster upgrade, which allows us to obviously charge the chain that I was talking about, but also the burner, which we get from the third Maverick, the, which is um, wire, wire stag, uh, flame stag. So as soon as we're done with uh, three Mavericks, we basically have almost everything that we need in the game in order to go fast. We get the, uh, the chain and the burner. Right. And, and no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and, and then the buster to, you know, charge off the attacks. Yeah, despite this saying any percent, it's more like 100%. Uh, yeah. Because Geo will be getting all the upgrades plus the hidden, you know, the hidden move, which in this game, I'm sure you can. Uh, and the only thing that separates this from 100% is three optional boss fights on the, uh, on the counter hunter. The X hunters, counter hunters, you know, depending on which version you're playing on. Um, 
But I, I don't know if you caught it, Timu, but he got a double up with Sponge, which is the best RNG you can get. It's what you want to see Sponge doing. I actually didn't get it because the other uh, stream I was watching crash, but I was trying to like make it not noticeable because I'm trying to like fix it. <laughs> well, I did a good job in just blowing your spot up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sponge uh, went, went double up for him. And Sponge can waste a lot of time if uh, he wants to. Very reset heavy Maverick. Yeah, Sponge is maybe possibly the most RNG heavy boss in the game. Um, X2 actually isn't quite as luck heavy as the speedrun as X1 is, but there's still quite a lot of annoying luck in here, namely Sponge and then Centipede, and we'll get to Centipede a bit later. Um, something about Gator Stage, I would say the Gator Stage is actually the most execution heavy stage in the game overall. It's like, I always feel like X1 and X2 are very parallel to each other because X in X1 you have Kuwanger stage, which is like the most execution heavy stage as the second Maverick stage in the game. And then in X2 you have Gator, which is like very similar as also the second Maverick. You'd say so, Gator's more execution heavy than Stag? Yeah, I feel so. I feel so. It's, it's longer and I feel like it has more variation in the stress that you need to do. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I can totally see that. I think they're very, very close for a lot of people. Yeah. Also, something about Gator, um, as I'm sure you saw, you can you can stun lock, stun lock Gator with a chain. Like once you once you hit Gator with a chain, you have I forget it's like a four or five frame window. Yeah, uh, I think it's after, optimally four. four yeah, four frame. After his iframes end, he starts to dive underwater, but you have that small window there where you can hit him again and then repeat the animation until he dies, basically. Yeah, it, but, uh, Gio made it look really easy, but it's actually really difficult. So I'm yeah, I, I'm still very bad at that. I am still <laughs> very bad at that. I have the uh, I have the world record for low percent in this game, and I'm still very bad at that game <laughs> fight. I've never <laughs> learned to be good at it, ever. So I'm a little kind of rusty here. I was asked to do commentary on a, like I'm on a minute's notice here, so I yeah, literally I a minute. <laughs> miss some stuff here. Stag's but also, a very fun stage. Cool. yeah, I like Stack. And um, the cool thing about Mega Man X2 compared to pretty much any other X game, uh, at least on the Super Nintendo, is that you can get everything in this game without revisiting a single stage. So the route that Geo is doing here allows him to collect everything, uh, excluding the zero parts, uh, without revisiting a single stage. But you can also get the zero parts. If you want to actually 100% this game, uh, you can also do it without revisiting. And uh, I'll, I'll add to something that Fly said. So the reason, the actual reason all the items are, are collected because is because they are required for the sure you can. So it's not just like for fun and games, but you can, you need to get everything except the zero parts to get the sure you can. And the reason the Shoryuken still saves time in the end, even though it obviously does take a lot of time to get the items, is because even though you could kill the bosses without the Shoryuken at the end, but there's so much luck and so much RNG involved that to um, save the uh, 15, I believe 15 seconds optimally that you could save by not getting the items and just placing through the game. You would basically need luck that is <laughs> less likely than win winning the lottery. So, you know, good luck with that. Yeah, you'd have to get lucky and with Sponge and Centipede twice. And it's hard yes. enough to get lucky with them once. <laughs> yeah, Big and run. then you need to execute perfectly on top of that. Yeah, e even though which you'll see later, Shoryuken is is not quite the same as uh, the Hadouken from X1. No, unfortunately it's quite, not. Yeah, it's, it's not a instant one-hit KO. It, it deals damage in a very kind of weird way. Centipede is a cool stage, and you can yeah, actually... Yeah, everybody's favorite stage. 
Yeah, and you can see some pretty cool utilization of both the chain and the burner here. Like you can, just by watching, you can like see the logic. You obviously go faster uh, horizontally. <laughs> And the burner isn't quite as fast as the chain. The chain is like optimally better. But obviously the, the burner you can use anywhere. Whereas with the chain you need something to grab onto. So it's really, really situational, you know, which weapon you want to use. And every section kind of has its own optimal strat. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um a lot of movement options in X2, uh, as opposed to X1 and X3. Um, obviously X1, you know, you only have dash. Um, yeah. X3 has neons, but, uh, you know, X2 does as well. But X2, you know, with the chain burner, you can just really zoom around places and use it to skip some things. And it's a really cool movement options. As you saw just, just a couple seconds ago, Geo did that burner into that dash jump and looked like the block should have crushed him, but he did a little zip uh, through the block. And that's I think that's because burner burner goes faster than an air dash, right, Timo? I believe that's why oh, yeah. it's yeah, 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 optimal. Yeah. I believe the burner is uh, twice the speed of a dash. But and it's I could a further be wrong. distance, I think, too, right? It goes travels longer distance on the ground, I believe, than in the air. I think that's how it works. It could, possibly could be, honestly. X2's a mystery to everybody. Yeah, and really good centipede luck here. Yeah, yeah he uh, he gave the tail. Yeah, so spin basically, all early. maybe the commentator should explain <laughs> the fight. <then. laughs> so so basically, <laughs> if you fight centipede normally, if any any if anyone here has played the game casually, perhaps uh, you you know that centipede can be quite a pain because he can teleport all over the place and waste all your time, even even playing casually. So the glitch that we call the Tailspin glitch there uh, allows us to kind of get the centipede stuck um, in that attacking animation, so where we can just kill him with his dance there. So basically he throws those tail pieces uh, all over the place. And then when you if you jump to the wall and slide down in a specific way, he kind of loses track of one of those tail pieces and since that tail piece never comes back to him he never moves out of the uh, the attack stance basically yeah it's a really um clever way to deal with that fight because had that not been discovered that fight would take a lot longer uh, yeah, and a centipede can just teleport forever the cool mini boss skip over here so those of you again who have played this game casually know that there's a mini boss there that geo just kind of plays through so basically if you create enough lag usually as speedrunners we hate lag obviously but if you create enough lag at a very specific part there just before the mini boss um the lag sort of makes it so the boss doesn't like understand to load i'm not really sure what happens there i'm like good at mega man x1 and 3 <laughs> but i'm like i'm not the best at explaining x2 like i said moments notice here i but, think uh, it has to do with the screen scrolling the lag yeah. causes like the screen to like not scroll enough to actually start that boss fight because it's like a camera lock issue similar to um uh dillo skip in x1 yeah. So basically, you can just speed burner through it, the boss never loads, and then it just plays through it. I often even forget that there is a mini boss there. I, I yeah. saw a runner, like, uh, miss that skip some time ago, and I was like, oh, wait, oh, there's a boss there? Oh, I had totally <laughs> forgotten. And that's actually a pretty easy skip to do. Like, yeah. pretty much anybody can do it. It's literally even casual, just release... Yeah. yeah, just release burner on like a pretty wide window and let it do its thing and and you'll go right through them yeah uh he, geo missed the um the optimal crab for yeah uh, snail, snail fight sorry yeah you'll fly that's crab a snail, snail that's not a crab. <laughs> yeah. uh so ideally snail. what you oh go yeah. ahead no, no go ahead no, go, go ahead, ahead. <laughs> oh, no 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 a just... snail <laughs> kind of <hot. laughs> 
<laughs> We're professional, dude. Damn, man, this, this is such professional commentary. <laughs> so, I was gonna say, the snail highlights something that is pretty cool about X2, uh, where a lot of the bosses, outside of a few, are very scripted. So if you do the same thing every time, you get the same result every time. Which is better than most of the bosses in X1, for example, you know, as far as a, a speedrun goes. Uh oh, this could be a little scary. Geo's missing quite a little bit, of, quite a bit of health, and that's yeah. gonna make grabbing that heart a little bit scary. So Geo is gonna be attempting to grab the heart upgrade here, but since there are some collectibles on the way, missing health will mess up. Okay, he got it. <laughs> oh, he played it nice. safe. <laughs> Yeah, so the collectibles there will mess up with your timing because, you know, the game pauses uh, every time a health upgrade fills your health. So it's way easier to go there with full health, but Geo being the god gamer that he is, survives just fine. Hey, guys, so I like... have a uh, quick donation here, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, we got $25 from Mivu24, said, head to donate again for this great cause. My mom is a breast cancer survivor, and I'm super happy about that. More people need a happy end. One question for Fly. How much do you like X2? Good luck with this impossible game, Geo, and have fun, y'all. Thank you so much for the donation. Yo, thanks, Mivu. And it's pretty pretty well known in, in my group of friends that uh, I don't like this game very much. I find it very difficult. I'm not good at it, and that frustrates me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it is also my least favorite of the three, but it, it mostly has to do with the fact that I think X2 any percent is really among the hardest Mega Man X Super Nintendo categories. Like, if you want to get, like, do everything in this category and go fast in every screen, it is very difficult. It is extremely hard to be consistent. And... <laughs> If you want to get good at swapping a Mega Man X game, play X2 because yes. there is an insane Absolutely. amount of swapping very fast. Uh, good, yeah, good, good ostrich fight. He got, I think he got all double hits on that, which is, you know, what you want to see. Um, and basically ostrich, so what Geo was doing there was really quick, I'll explain it, was he was hitting ostrich while he was technically still frozen, but his iframes had expired. Similar to what you can do in Mandrill and X1 if, uh, if you guys had noticed that, or if Geo explained that um, during Geochi's run. But a fairly easy strat, pretty easy to learn. Um, but getting those double hits with the buster, uh, you know, jumping, getting the buster, and then the uh, crystal shot is actually pretty difficult. One small thing to explain here. Um, people who have played this game casually may be confused here about why Geo is able to jump so high. Here, because I think a lot of people, when they collect these items here, they use um, Bubble Crab's own weapon, uh, the, the Bubble Shield, because the effect of it is that underwater you can jump way higher with the Bubble Shield. But the reason is that in, in all the Super Nintendo Mega Man X games, uh, if X walks down a slope and then regular jumps, uh, so no dash jumping, but if you regular jump while walking down a slope, it, you actually have increased jump height. So, you saw Geo there take, taking advantage of the small slopes just beneath the items, uh, the sub tank and the hard tank that he was collecting. So you can actually gain enough height for both items, even without the, the bubble shield. Geo went for the Gameo, but I don't think he got it. Oh, uh, I honest to God don't even know how Gameo... Okay, so... so... What Geo was going for there was to drop a charged wheel at a very specific spot. Um, and I'm probably pretty sure he uses the uh, the little background. The background kind of looks like, um, I don't know what you call shutters, I guess. Window shutters. I... Uh, and that'll, what that'll do is the, the wheel explodes and it'll hit Crab. And then Crab will jump into the actual wheel. Because even though it's not on screen, it technically still exists. Uh, and optimally, you want to get, you can get two of them in that fight, and it just saves, you know, it's just a slight optimization to save a little bit of time. Yeah, there's there's three patterns that he can give off the bat. I like, uh, the easiest one is the bubble pattern. Uh, oh, shadow, I can do man. that, I can do that, yeah. I can do it, uh, the bubble pattern 
mostly pretty consistently. If he walks, I can still kind of do it. I just didn't decide to go for it because I was, you know, nervous. Because I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to watch to see if, uh, if you were going to get the double hit. Because I figured you were probably going to go for uh, the double Gameo. Yo, hello guys, I'm back. Embarrassing, but I'm uh, obviously having some internet problems at a very bad time. Good, good, good thing we oh, have well. several commentators. No worries, because my computer's run by potato. Let's try to make it through. So, so what Timo was explaining before was those the slope jumps. You just, if you hadn't noticed, you would have seen Geo do another two there uh, to get the height he needed to um, to get up to that ledge. Or the, I guess the walls for 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 that little climb that he just did on the way up to this mid boss. No Gustavo. A worse pattern actually. <laughs> <laughs> you got another chance at a Gustavo though. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Really, the coolest part about all the Mega Man X Super Nintendo runs are all the small things, the very little movement optimizations that you can do, that you would have no idea about playing casually, that you only... These are like basic mechanics in these games, these very cool mechanics that you only really learn through speedrunning, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Yeah, what? there's oh my. opportunities mm. to bleed time what? everywhere. Pretty yes. much on every wall kick, on every dash, you can you can lose time in these. In oh the, my! In these game. I do not believe myself. Wow. Nah, nah, dude. Oh, moth can be a problem if you mess up the fight. So it, the moth boss fight is very easy if you do the scripted fight. But once it goes wrong, it can really go wrong. Moth actually hits like a truck, and I believe. Yeah. I believe that a moth hits you the same amount regardless of whether you have the armor or not. But I could be wrong, but that's something I remember reading about once. This is probably also as good of time as any to explain that Geo is running on emulator. So the emulator and the, the console boards are separate for one very specific reason, and that's because emulator has unpredictable lag. So you'll see it a lot in moth fight if, if you had well geo fired a um a non-charged burner so that caused some lag but if he didn't fire oh. that that burner like uh, you would have seen virtually no lag in that fight um and if you're familiar with this game you know that moth is a very very laggy fight uh, on console so for that reason the the boards are separate um because you can kind of sort of abuse the, the uh, lack of lag in this game on emulator. Emulation abuse, dude. I love Emulation it. Emulation abuse, exactly. Geo, that was really close to hitting those spikes. <laughs> dude, I'm not getting any of my crystal shots, I swear, dude. So if Gator isn't the hardest stage in the game, I think that it's this one, the first on the hardest stage. It's basically, it's a, it has a lot not of bad. climbing while charging. So to those of you who haven't played these games, uh -huh. You charge by holding the shoot button, which is uh, the Y button on the Super Nintendo controller. And then you climb walls by tapping the jump button, which is the B button. And that can be very, like, unergonomic on, on your fingers. And you do it a lot in this stage. You hold down one button, and then you tap another button, like, with the under, under underneath of your thumb. Uh, very yeah, that, that on top of, you know... X being fully powered up now, he has all the weapons, so you're going to see a lot of swaps in rapid succession. Uh, oh, and yeah. to do that while holding, you know, you're holding Y, trying to get optimal wall climbs by hitting B, and also, you know, mashing L or R or whatever as many times as you need to to swap rapidly back and forth between weapons. Uh, um, the run really ramps up in, uh, in Counter Hunter. An unrelated note, I saved two seconds in Moth, thanks to me completely screwing up the entire stage in my PV. I would say we'd talk about the violin fight, which is that boss you just saw Geo beat, but there's really nothing to that fight. You just stand in his face with charge bubble, yes. and uh, <laughs> yes. he can't do anything about it. No, my... <laughs> That's like a cool tip casually, and then that is how you kill <laughs> Rip. Oh, here we so go. Th there's a big make or break trick coming up here. Called the elevator skip. Horrible gamer dude. Not 
Oh, oh, oh. Or, oh no. You got the hard part, but. Horrible gamer, dude. Can't even get on the elevator. Yeah, so basically we call this trick the elevator skip, but that's kind of erroneous because we don't skip the elevator. <laughs> if we get the trick, we actually ride the elevator. We just, we do use the elevator, but we, when we get the trick, what we skip is actually the waiting of the elevator, if we're being technical. So it should be called elevator wait skip, but hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> elevator cycle skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I hate this. So we have the like the big big bad of this run. Surgeys, no RNG, but very hard execution. So Close what Geo will attempt to do here is you can shoot the well they're not boomerangs, but those boomerang type weapons there. You can shoot them and it looks like Geo is getting getting this double hit. So you can shoot shoot those weapons at Sergei's in such a way that they actually hit him on the way up and on the way down. And that's not intended, technically, per se. It's like very, very pixel perfect, very precision perfect. Um, you need, you want to unleash the weapon at a very spe specific spot to get the hits. And then you also need to move in a specific way to control no. the movement of Sergei's no. himself. Yeah, I, I believe it's horizontally pixel perfect, or not maybe not pixel perfect, but horizontally. Uh, you no, know, like your horizontal axis has to be aligned, yeah, and your yeah. vertical axis yeah. also has to be aligned. Yeah. Aligned, sorry. So yeah, they're very. Those double hits are very tough um, to do. Just generally, but not only that, is to do them optimally as well. Yeah. Oh, neons. <laughs> hey, look, the <demon> neons. <laughs> so. Neon is when you have the full charge with the other uh, buster upgrade and then you air dash and then you shoot and you jump on the same frame. Um, so the, the, the game sort of thinks you're on ground for uh, one frame and this is uh, the short you can upgrade here. Dude, I... Well. Yeah, and you can get kind of a, a little bit of a visual evidence of, of what happens during a Neon. Um, by dashing and releasing a neon, it's the only shot that will, uh, only Buster shot that will stop X's movement. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. That's a very tough jump. Dude, I, yeah, what is going on hard. here? <laughs> most most top runners don't even go go for that run. I don't, I don't know if any current top runner even goes for that jump. People usually take that safer. So that was a big testicle stretch. I don't know if I can say that on the stream. But... <laughs> Oh. Oh yeah, my it, goodness. It's, it's very tight. You ideally, I mean, to, to to get that jump, you'd have to be oh you have to be at the very right edge of that platform, and at the very peak of your jump, you want to do a full air dash. There you go. Nice. Never be have easy. ever before have I died that many times in CH3 the same way. It's not that bad of a death, though. I mean, it's it's fairly close. You're just down some weapon energy. Yeah. But it doesn't even matter. Because, uh, unlike Classic, your weapon energy refills in between each fortress. No, does it? Yeah, it does, right? Yes, yes it does. I've been playing Classic so much that I forget, honest. <laughs> Can still turn so in uh, Mega Man X2, oh you, you perform the Shoryuken just like you perform the Haroken. But you had an X1 run earlier, so I'm pretty sure that's been explained pretty well. But yeah, it is basic, basically the same fighting game inputs that you do in the game and then press shoot. And... Uh, except, like we said earlier, Hado will, is an instant KO. It doesn't matter what portion of the Hado hits. It will automatically one hit KO. Whereas Shoryu, it's, what is it, like 16 damage every other frame or something like that? Yes, uh, yeah. Isn't it it's 16 on initial contact and then like uh, 8 damage per every two frames? Something weird like that. Yeah, so Geo goes to Gator first, so here's the first opportunity you, you might see to... Oh, never mind. Where uh, if you're not positioned well enough on that Shoryu for Gator, you will uh, just go right through him. You'll do damage to him, but not enough to kill him. You usually leave him at a few health, two, three, four, um, depending on your position. So 
on top of the Shoryu input being almost impossible to do, it's not a one-hit KO, so it's got a little bit of a wonky mechanic to it. This is also a really good spot for donations, if there are any. Goodness. I don't know. I don't know if Sham can hear us. I would assume no, yeah, we can. It's actually possible to go too fast on Stag Shoryu and just hit him once. Fortunately, um, no! most, well, a lot, I guess I should say, a lot of the Shoryus in um, Counter Hunter 4, or what's called Shoryu Rush, uh, are pretty, pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward, I guess I should say. Um, but there are a few that are uh, kind of make or break, and uh, Snail, which... Geo will save for last, I'm sure, is pretty much the make or break sure you. Because he can just do whatever he wants to do. I think I'm the only runner in the community who actually okay. kind of enjoys the sure you can for whatever reason. It's, it's usually uh, when people list the reasons why they dislike running X2, the sure you rush is number one on everybody's list. But I actually kind of like it. What I don't like is the room that you have to maneuver through. I, I really don't enjoy the teleportation room. In this game, I think it's hard to move optimally here. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that they kind of went back for the refights in X2 and X3. We'll start yeah. in X2 and then kind of kept it, I guess. Uh, they went back to the classic style of just a, uh, a boss rush as yeah, opposed so, to X1. Yeah, X1 has... So the, the way it goes is X1 did the refights the same way Mega Man 1 did the refights, where you just have them kind of sprinkle through the final stages. But then X2 basically just did what Mega Man 2 started and have this giant teleporter room with all the bosses. And yeah, that's interesting. I never realized that that, yeah, that is that MM1 right. and X1 both do that and then yes. from now. Yeah. <laughs> And it's pretty universally agreed upon that the way X1 and Mega Man 1 do it is better. Especially for speedrunners, because it breaks the monotony when you have those actual stage portions in between the boss fights. He's gonna go for Icy Hot here. So let's see if he gets it. And... Nice! Okay, Icy Hot. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really that works... good strength. So how that works is... Specific areas of... X1 and X2, you can buffer inputs on health refills, namely uh, in the fortress stages. So what Geo was doing there was buffering a crystal shot and then also buffering a cancel swap by holding L and R. And doing that will pre-buffer, it's very, it's very weird, I know, but it, he's basically buffering two inputs with a cancel swap in between that, and it makes the crystal shot come out, and then the shore you instantly come out after that. It's a really cool looking strat. And we got the good snail too. Nice, yeah, he didn't hide. Yeah, so snail is RNG rush. here, and he can pretty much do. Yeah, really good rush. Really good rush. It was okay. And snail can really ruin your day if you're on pace here when doing attempts because it's RNG when if he. Just goes to hide in his shell, he can waste your time, he can damage you, he can force you to use sub tank because you need to be at full health in order to use the short you can so basically the way that works is like if you take damage uh. at some point it, it just ruins everything. And for whatever reason, unlike X1, you really never have any spare uh, health in your sub tanks in uh, yeah in that's X2, true so. yeah 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 in x1 you always have stuff in your sub tank because you yeah, go through dillo like, like you go through dillo like four times and you get a yeah. bunch of uh health from the miners yes shout out to yeah. no Linto, by the way oh for the backup strat here nice nice backup yo nice backup yeah. so <laughs> what geo zero <laughs> <laughs> so, what Geo wanted to do there is, you can enter the room in such a way that you sure you sure and use the sure you animation to kind of move X past the, the spot where the camera locks. 
so you can actually start the fight like Get right bucked. in front of Zero and show you him instantly. But he and, uh, and missed the show you there. And if you don't get that initial Shoryu and kind of botch the Zero fight, he goes full sicko mode and there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, uh, spark, uh, true. Oh, nice. Emulation oh, abuse! Time. time is coming up as soon as, uh, Geo gets the final hit and the screen freezes, it'll be time. I love emulator! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta switch to emu emulator, dude. <laughs> nice. GG. 3452. Nice. That's a gold CH5. Nice. GG. I'm surprised it was a gold since I messed up Zero Shoryu. Oh, goodness. That good. was a really clean run. Shoutouts to vacuums. <laughs> yeah, the early vacuum strats. I still finished with a 34 at least. That's the only thing I wanted to do. <laughs> uh... Yeah, sick run. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the run to uh, Geo. I'll uh, un unmute you here. All right, you're unmuted, Geo. Um, Alrighty. Thank you so much for the run. It was a great watch, an awesome time. And uh, thank you so much for the uh, commentators. You guys were uh, picked it up and uh, carried it along. So uh, you, you did a great job. Couldn't have asked for a better run. And uh, we appreciate you guys being part of the event. Thanks. Thanks, Gio, for having us. Yeah, thank yeah, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Timu, for coming at the last second, dude. <laughs> Sorry, it was really bad. But... <laughs> I thought it was really good, though. Thanks, Fly, for the commentator. Thanks for having yeah, me. Man. GG. Awesome. Thank you, folks, and we are going to go to a brief intermission. We'll be back with another run, so don't go anywhere.